Thanks so much for tuning into my YouTube channel, guys. This is the Brookston's Lad coming to you from Kingston, Jamaica. And you notice what I'm showing you? Yes, I'm showing you my very vast Leaf and Bakia collection, all right? Uh, some of them looking great, some of them not looking so great, but this video is going to show you some unique tips as to how to care for your leaf and bakia plants, how what to do, what not to do. Uh, and the, the difference with this video is that it's going to be showing you the most efficient tips that you can do on a long-term basis, especially if you are a professional or if you're really just on a budget. Typically, the healthcare regimen for all leaf and bakias are the same. Uh, although we have different species here, they are under the same conditions really, but for the most part, we're going to cover the Diefenbachia amina, right? That, that's this one right here. We're actually going to be taking a look at one that is recently cut, one that was propagated, and we're going to show you some exciting ways as well that you can take care of your Diefenbachia plant on a typical daily basis. Now the leading edge with my videos is that not only will they teach you the concepts, the basic concepts of how to take care of a plant, but they will provide with more innovative, yeah, expensive techniques of, to, as to how to take care of a plant using basic supplies already accessible in your backyard. So you'll be sure to gain much insight and so don't forget to hit the like or subscribe button to see more additional postings to this channel as well. Alright, so we're going to also be looking at plant care, we're going to look at in terms of the soil, in terms of the watering, in terms of the general care conditions, especially in the Caribbean. Most times the videos online tend to cater to the general conditions, but by following these tips and guidelines, you will be able to ensure that you have very healthy and very attractive looking leaf and back here just as this and probably even better just by following these simple hacks that are definitely able to help you to withstand uh, typical as well as atypical conditions. Okay guys, so this is my leaf and bakia plant or as they also call it, a dumb cane plant. I must apologize guys for the footage of this plant. I didn't realize that it would actually show in the portrait video version here. Nevertheless, I hope you guys can bear with me. I just want to introduce this plant to you as it was recently cut. It was actually touching five feet. It was actually a house plant. It, I actually saw that it came, I came, actually saw that it toppled over one evening and just decided right then and there to propagate it just by cutting it up, uh, keeping the, retaining the head, the main head with some of the stem as well as express, use, use a chance rather to express other new plants from it, from stem cuttings. You notice as well, while I, I kept the main head, you will see that in terms of the cuttings, because of the size of the pot, I was able to express at least five pieces of cuttings from the stem and I positioned each piece of these stem cuttings inside, well around the pot. So I basically use a little quote unquote style to replant the cuttings in that I kept the main head in the middle and you'll notice that I got at least five pieces just trying to uplift one of these cuttings so that you can get a look at it. I'm getting some resistance, so I am moving to the next cutting to get a lesser resistance so that it can be easily uplifted so that you can get a better view of it. Come up with ease. Uh, there we are, right? Great, 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 great. So we can look at it, right? So just to examine this cut for a sec. Um, notice the stalk typically, the stem would typically would have been this way, right? And some persons may actually plant it down this way. Um, if you notice, I did not do that because when this stem will actually root, I'm sure it will root and it will grow, it will actually spring again as you're seeing right here, right? But you'll notice that as this plant actually grows in this direction, in this vertical direction, the stem is actually going to will grow like this. Uh, you'll notice that the new shoot actually does grow and it grows upright, but you'll notice it grows as, a, as an obvious side shoot while the cut stem 
actually is growing as well uh, not the most attractive look of the plant ideally you really want just the main head to be showing uh, without any obvious propagation method and that's why I place the stem horizontally so that only the main head will grow from that stem cutting in terms of a soil composition generally the dome cane is not particular in terms of a light soil versus heavy soil performance but at the same time uh, it's usually better to aim for a lighter but manageable and rich soil composition this soil is for the most part relatively it's in between not too heavy but I, well it's more on the heavy side but it's not completely heavy it actually was diluted with uh, 40% compost, 60% regular garden soil. Um, you notice as well that the pot may look a little full of, of soil. Um, that really is just to accommodate the intended size of the dumb cane plant. You notice that the stem of this dumb cane plant is abnormally big broad I'm not sure what exactly attributes to that I, I like to think it's because of the quality the richness of the soil um, you notice as well that leaves are bigger than the typical size of this leaf and macchia plant as I, as I had just shown you earlier as well and also it the, the depth of the pot with this soil is also to, to accommodate the number of cuttings that I have inside the pot in addition to the main stem just in case I may choose to keep the remaining cuttings along with the main head in that stem so all of that was conscious in terms of watering you notice that I do not have a, a saucer beneath the pot um, that really is just to uh, that's really by chance I may just decide to put one over time but I usually allow the soil to dry out before I water again um, because in the Caribbean it's going to the heat is going to start intensifying I will have to be very vigilant in watching the soil to ensure that uh, putting my hand one inch into the soil and testing for dryness that will be an indicator that whether or not I will need to water the soil water the plant Uh, this plant is under a tree uh, in a shaded zone um, for the past three weeks because it was only three weeks ago that it was propagated so i'm giving the plant some time to adapt by expressing new roots and uh, as well as the stem cuttings as well to acclimatize uh, i really want to minimize as much plant shock for this plant as possible hence it's in a shaded zone um, I would generally recommend however indirect to relatively low lighting for this plant absolutely no direct sunlight or direct lighting would I recommend for this plant I do have another plant which I can show that because of the exposure to direct sunlight it burned the foliage uh, you really want to avoid that as much as possible you want to ensure that you have a, a, a very healthy foliage and so you want to wash lighting as well also to enhance the presentation of this plant generally I like when the leaf and bucket grows in, a, in an upright position I really do not want that it's slant or it has a winding look so what I do is every two weeks I do give it a 180 degree rotation so that it can grow towards the sunlight and it grows evenly so that it maintains that straight upright look so that's really my aim for my plants i want to ensure that not only do they look do are they healthy but they look healthy as well and they also look attractive at the same time so i do watch the direction in which the stem is growing to indicate exactly how to position the plant in general all right and this is my other dfm backyard plant which has been seated here for the past eight weeks eight to ten weeks that is and uh, one of the things that stands out 
for me with this man is the leaf side it's similar to the previous one, one which i've shown you and it is it's relatively healthy in terms of the soil ratio for the most part um seeing that it has quite a number of leaves on it um which really adds to the array and the, the beauty of the plant um i also ensure that because of how it spreads i give it as much space as possible um what i like with this plant is that the stem is semi disproportionate to the ratio of the number of leaves um it's a lot the stem, the stem is a lot slimmer compared to the other one which i've shown you which to me as a nice a nice complement to the plant um also you notice the sunburn which i'm showing you right here is as a result of being exposed to indirect light which perhaps is a bit too much for the plant um, you want to avoid that at all costs you also want to ensure that the plant you, you watch it every week well watch it every day but at least watch it every week and rotate it to ensure that it has even distribution of lighting across so that it can grow as straight and as upright as possible um, you definitely want to watch, check each leaf as well to uh, watch for proper foliage formation uh, you want to also ensure that the plant is in a spot where it's not being brushed against and it's not being uh, touched unnecessarily and of course if you find that your leaves are scorching a bit because of the lighting do not forget to mist the plant and with emphasis on the leaves at least even once or twice per week definitely should help to cool down the leaves add some humidity and as a result that would should decrease the incidence of sunburns and allow for much better foliage um, another thing i'd like to point out as well with this plant is the leaf formation you notice that there are a number of holes on it you really want to avoid at all costs that's in part due to frequent traversing across which may have um, caused it to tear at the edge as well as the holes which usually may be an issue with the soil as well perhaps an imbalance with the nitrogen potassium uh, ratio and phosphorus ratio so you want to ensure that the, the soil has doesn't have too much of uh, these nutrients in the soil these trace elements as well so it's a good thing to a good suggestion to really bear in mind is to not put as much compost as you normally would use the ratio perhaps would in this case be even 25% uh, compost 75% typical garden soil uh, another solution that you could use as well is to use more soft water like rain water to actually water the plants instead of using water from the pipe you want to use rain water such that it helps dilute the concentration of these rich trace elements in the soil which the plant may be absorbing which is contributing to the, the hole in the leaves Another suggestion as well is that you can watch the texture of the soil by diluting the concentration to make it a little lighter. In this case, I use merely just garden soil and compost. What you could do if you find that your plant is not doing so well with it is just to add perhaps some cocoa peat or some peat moss. You could even use a blend of bagasse. Uh, in the Caribbean that tends to be very common that is dried sugarcane trash that they normally perhaps even use to stuff furniture that they tend to mince and they can dilute that in the soil as well to soften it, to aerate it, to lighten it uh, to make the roots less constrictive, more breathable to aerate the soil and so plants tend to do better the defense bucket tends to do a lot better in that kind of condition as well and so the dilution would slow down the rate at which the plant absorbs much of these trace elements thereby resulting in much stronger leaf edges a stronger formation and a very minimal chance of you having these holes on the leaves if however i do find that the 
pulls increase in more of the leaves then i may choose to uh, employ this method but for now i'm just going to leave it uh watch to see the progress of the plant over time it, it after all has been in the pot for at least eight nine months and so i may choose to even cut it anyway because i do not like my dumb cane plants too tall um so for these reasons i believe i'm gonna let it stay but just as a suggestion to you uh, as you are monitoring your plants and you know just wanting to have as much insight as possible I'm hoping that all these pointers you can bear in mind as, as consideration to improve the quality of your dumb cane especially this type over time I really hope you enjoy this video please feel free to leave questions or comments down in the comment section below as well as to hit the like and subscribe button for additional postings to this channel